So I forked it over to my personal GitHub. I'm gonna git clone it, green button, click this copy button, and there we go. <clears throat> so I mean, my challenges, git clone, right there, come on, clone it, list everything out. Right here is my school interface one. I'm gonna CD into school interface one, clear it, and I'm gonna git checkout dash B instructor solution to go on a new branch. Right there. Now I'm gonna open this all up in my current window. Here we go. And then we're gonna go, go ahead and get started <clears throat> and kind of read through this. So what we are building, so we have this little menu, this, uh, <clears throat> this uh, I don't wanna say graphical user interface, but a, a, a terminal user interface um, that we're gonna create. So for this challenge, we'll be building a simple interface for a school that will keep track of students or keep, keep track of student records. There are many ways to create the functionality, functionality we are looking for, and you should feel free to experiment beyond the scope of this tutorial. We'll be using the menu above as a guide. So kind of like this. By the end of this, you'll see a list of students, view an individual student's data, and create and delete records. We'll also build a simple authentication system. So this is current school interface one. We're gonna have school interface two, three, and four, and just keep on building upon it. So this tutorial is pretty comprehensive, but it's also meant to challenge you. Some steps are deliberately vague to force you to do your own research, as well as do some debugging. Don't, don't get discouraged, help each other out. All right. <clears throat> So right now we only have two Python files and a data folder for our CSVs. Let's take a look at it. So we have a school folder or file and a runner file. We're gonna to continue to see a runner file. This is what we're actually gonna, this is the file we're gonna actually execute to run our program. And so we have a runner file. So this is the file that we may have not seen before. So here we go. <clears throat> so, notice the import statement above the top. In order to keep our code organized, we'll separate our classes and modules into their own files. We can bring our code from one file into another by doing from the file name, import the class name. Run Python runner in the command line. You'll get an error because we haven't finished writing our class yet. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna separate this out just so, so in here we have our staff and our students. So here we actually have headers and now we have a list of all our students. Likewise with the staff. Headers, name, age, role, employee ID, password, and the name of the staff. All right. <clears throat> so I'm a Python runner and there we go. We get an error, Python, Python or file runner.py line three. So line three, school takes no arguments. So I come over here to school and I can see there's nothing really there. So we actually have to build out the school right here. So let's just copy this into our school class. <clears throat> so we have a knit. School takes in a name, self.name equals name, and then we have two empty arrays for staff and students. So this is kind of like apple trees. We're gonna be um, creating an array of student objects and an array of staff objects. So we'll start by initializing, initializing our school with a name. Feel free to add other attributes as well. So again, the school class will be uh, responsible for keeping track of staff and students. There we go. <clears throat> so later we're gonna get our student records loaded right into the class when we start our program. So now we can create our student and staff classes using the headers in the corresponding CSV as a guide. We can see attributes, make up a student and staff member and create instance variables accordingly. So with that, I've got list, I've got a school, py and a runner py, but now I have to create a student.py, touch student.py and a staff.py. 
and I can code student and staff to open them up right there. So I've got my student and I've got my staff right here. So let's just copy student right there. So student takes in a name, age, role, school ID, and password. We can kind of see that from our students.csv file, name, age, role, school ID, password. Likewise with the staff, pretty much the same thing, but the only little bit different is the employee ID versus the school ID for the students. So if you look at the staff, we can see name, age, role, employee ID, and password. So I'm gonna close these CSV files. So now I've got, I'm gonna list everything out here. So I've got a school, which takes, is like, think of a school, like a high school or something. High schools have staff and high schools have students. So we wanna keep those things separate. A staff member is different than a student. What questions do you have so far about separating out the staff from a student and separating everything from the school class? No questions so far. All right. <clears throat> so let's continue on with the, the readme. That's a lot of repeated code. There's a lot to be refactored. Looks like right now students and staff only differ when it comes to how their IDs are stored and labeled. Again, staff has employee ID, student has school ID. As our program develops, we may discover other differences. So a good idea is keep those class, those separate classes, but we do want to keep our code as dry as possible. So it says, let's create a person class and move any shared attributes there. Then set up your staff and school classes so that they inherit from the person, read about inherit, like we haven't even discussed what inheritance is, we'll cover it in detail tomorrow. So, what is unique about a student and a staff? They both have a name, age, role, and I guess password, but the only difference is the school ID versus the employee ID. So, a student and a staff, they're both people, they're both a person. So we can actually go ahead and create a person, oops, uh, person.py file. <clears throat> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this, move students over here, close the runner. So the only difference is name, age, role, employee, and password. So I'm just gonna copy this over here, create a person. So now we have this person class that takes in a name, age, role, and password. <clears throat> so now we want our staff class and our student class to inherit all the attributes from the person class. So if you think, um, when you think of inheritance, like you inherit traits from your family or you're from your, your parents. So we wanna inherit the traits or the attributes from person into student. So student wants to inherit the traits or attributes from the person class. And in order to do that, we can import or from person, import the person class. And now within the student class, we can inherit all attributes from the person class. Likewise with staff class, or from person, import person. Now we want staff to inherit all the elements all these instance variables, all methods, if there are any, we want staff to inherit that as well from the person class. So what questions do you have so far about inheritance? And we're gonna cover it more in depth later today. <clears throat> but now, let's take a look. Let's just run some tests and see if this works. 
but now, so like when I initialize a new staff, it still has to take in all this stuff, but I want to pass name, age, role, and password over to the person class. And then so what's only left within the staff is this employee ID. So with that, I can literally invoke the person init method within the init method uh, in the staff class by running person dot dunder dunder init and then pass in name age role name age role and password like so likewise with student I can get rid of all of this and I can do uh, person dot dunder dunder init to execute the init method within person and then just pass in the name, age, role, and password. <clears throat> what questions do you have about I'm inheriting everything from the person class, but I'm invoking the person init method within the person or within the stat student init method and passing in name, age, role, and password into the person class and creating pretty much a new person. <clears throat> All right. So now this isn't or this this will work fine. Let's let's actually kind of, kind of test it out. Let's say like new student equals student um, age thirty four role student uh, school ID one two three password xx. So if I print new student and I'm come down here in the terminal up here. And I run the Python student. Uh oh, what happened? Password, name, age, role, student. What am I passing it off? <clears throat> Password, student, line five, person. Did we run it? Did someone else run into this? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I ran into that big time. Uh, so much so that I got sick of seeing self. Uh, clear. Let's see if super works. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so initially we did person, which I'm not sure why, why that didn't work. Maybe there's some protection. Yeah. Or did I have to invoke it? No. Um, anyway. <clears throat> so. Do you need self and your person in it? What's that? Do you need self in it? In my init? Yeah, like in the before the name. No, I don't think so. If I run that. Oh, it does. That's that's weird. Oh, I, I see why that. Okay. Anyway, we'll get get away from this because when you execute person, it's not very scalable. There's another way we can, because for example, what if we had person here and our code base is huge. It's like hundreds of thousands, millions of lines of code. And, you know, our CTO decides to say like, hey, you know, person that's not too, as descriptive. What if you wanted to change it to like human or like something like that? So now every time, every other class that inherits the human, I have to go and like change everything. Like every, any, any place where person exists in order to, but we can change that by doing like super. So super just says like, Hey, you know, Whatever the parent class is, this is, this is going to represent the parent class of student, which is person. So we don't have to 
So if we ever change this class name, we don't have to mess with super at all. We would just have to change what's in the parentheses after the student class? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now we have our student object, like so, by doing super. That's, this is best practice to use super versus the person with the self in front of it. <clears throat> so, so with that, we can also print like student dot name. Oh, name Tom. And we have Tom, even though we're passing in student the name all the way to the person. All right. So that's how we, that's how inheritance works. We'll cover it in more detail today. So we can refactor using dict and quargs. I'm going to, I don't necessarily don't like it done like, like this, but I'll go ahead and show you. But I, I kind of want to keep it like, like so, because if we use dict and quargs, we're essentially passing in all the attributes, including school ID over to person. <clears throat> so let's just kind of show you what that looks like. So inside of my person class, we kind of covered this the other day with uh, dict and, or quargs and args. Instead of passing in all these variables or as parameters, we can literally just pass in something like student info or like person info <clears throat> by doing the person info. And then in place of this, we can do self, self dot dunder dunder dict dunder dunder dot update the dictionary with the person info. <clears throat> so this literally grabs the dictionary within the object and updates it with like a bunch of personal info. So if we show, so let's just, so we have student info, that's just right here. student info like so, <clears throat> but now when we pass in, we kind of have to get rid of the school ID and pass all of this information, student info and pass all the student info as a keyword, quarks, keyword arguments, student info. So if I execute that and I print student info, it's, I still get the same object. It's a lot less code like so, but I like to explicitly see what I'm passing in to what arguments I need and all that. When you, so wouldn't student inherit the init method from its parent, the person? Um, I don't think it actually inherits the init method. <clears throat> I think that's unique to the object, but I, I actually don't, I'm not 100% sure. Because <clears throat> all the, so are you thinking like it would, initialize here as well as initialize here or like even you know, if I from from what I read is I think that if if you didn't have an init in student then it oh. would just take the init that's in person yeah I think you're right yeah so it'd be like um like I don't even think I need anything right yeah oh. where'd it go but I'm I'm not sure. It was kind of confusing to me. I could be completely wrong. Yeah. So essentially, it would remove like 
you're one hundred percent right. It would inherit the init method, so I wouldn't even need any init method in the student object. <clears throat> so this works just the same. But I don't like the way that looks <laughs> personally. Um, I like to th keep things separate, but just so you know, this is a way to do it. So I'm actually going to go back to how I had it before. Yeah, I was trying to do it that way where I didn't have the init method and it was super confusing on how my stuff was being initialized. Right. <clears throat> uh, where'd it go? Oh, there we go. So I personally like it done this way. I mean, you can pass in an object and then like extract all the values from the object. So you don't have to pass in all these different arguments like so. You can have like some like student object and then just extract the name, age, and role, and password from the object. <clears throat> but I'm just going to keep things like this because I want to keep the school ID and the staff ID kind of separate. But it's up to you. It's up to your whatever choice, whatever you want to do. You're not bound to any convention or any, it's kind of like personal preference as well as, you know, what's more readable for the, the next developer to come along to read your code. All right. <clears throat> So I showed you this. Um, this will help us a lot when we start to build ourselves out our user interface. Also notice that the order of arguments don't matter. That's fine. Like, so for example, if I wanted to do an object, uh, I'm just not gonna do an object. I don't wanna do that. <clears throat> so you can kind of see here how it works. All right, so now let's move our classes into a class folder. So as we, as our program is getting big, we see we have like all these files and we don't want all of our files in one single directory. So we wanna split out our classes into its, their own directory. So I'm gonna list everything out. I'm gonna make a directory classes and I'm gonna move all my classes into this directory. So I got a classes with a person class, school class, staff class, and student class. We got our data and then we have our runner file. So really we only have a runner file at the very top of our directory. So the next thing we need to do is load our data from the CSV file using Python's CSV module can read over the docs. <clears throat> so it says, write a method, all students, that returns an array of student objects that represent each row in the student.csv file. So student.allstudents, so we can either put it in the person class or ideally put it in the student class. So when we call student dot, like capital students, so this is the class name followed by all students. What kind of class is that? Or I'm sorry, what kind of method is all students? So if I'm explicitly yeah, calling, class, sorry, so, class method. So it's a class method. So I haven't created a student instance to call all students. So I literally can just call student, the uppercase student class followed by the all students and it should return a uh, object or an array of student objects. All right, <clears throat> so let's just start with student with our- Some quick question on that. So just to refresh my memory, the class method uh, can only interact with a class variable so I, I know you can print out like you know if you have a class variable 
up top, like you can print it out with the class name and then the dot and the class variable. But um, the class method, when you put the at class method above it, what does that limit that to again? I don't know if it limits anything explicitly. We can test it out. Um, but like, like it'll still work if you make it an instance method. So you like, you can still call student class dot, you know, all students, if the all students is a instance method, but the class method, I don't know. I actually don't know explicitly what it actually limits of what you can and can't do with it. Noah, do you kind of know? I'm not sure either. <laughs> yeah. But <clears throat> we can try to see if you're able to explicitly call it um, or we can like even like uh, class method uh, programming you can, like read explicitly what a class met method does. I don't like this. <clears throat> built-in function at which is an expression that gets evaluated F shows your function. All right. Yeah, so it's just bound to the actual class and not the object of the class. So it has the access to the state, the class and not the object. So you can modify the class state, yeah or modify any class variables. So I don't know if it explicitly limits anything, but <clears throat> yeah. All right, so we need to create an all students method. So def all students, and this is gonna be a class variable, or uh, yeah, class method. But if you wanted to write a, uh, an instance method like so, you can, it'll still work. You just might have to put like cell, like there's, there's a way to around it if you do made it a class or a, a instance method, <clears throat> but we wanted to make it a class method. Whoa. And do CLS <clears throat> for class. So in this all students method, this is where we will want to, uh, you open up our CSV, like open up students.csv and create student objects based on the data, the data we extract from the CSV. So <clears throat> here, usually we have our, data, our CSV files on the same level as our student class our student file, but here it's in a totally different level. We have to go up one into data and then into students. But here we want to grab the absolute path from the very, of our like operating system or of our computer. And um, so get the entire actual path. So if I import, right, import OS, I just want to kind of show you if I print, my path like so and I'm just gonna pass this right here and run so CD classes and run the student here's the actual path so users, TA pre, desktop, CP challenges, Mike challenges, school interface one, classes. So that's the actual path to this current file. And now I want to join my path. So grabbing this entire uh, path and then go up one level by doing dot, dot into data, into CSV. So now if I print the actual path, and clear the terminal. I can say, hey, from here, go into classes. That's what that first print path. The second path that I'm printing on line six is going, go into classes, then go up one level into the data, into the student CSV file. So now I actually have 
the path to my CSV file. <clears throat> so with that, I can do with open path, uh, what is it? With open path as, let's call it student, because I'm reading student file. And now I can do student reader. And now what kind of a reader do I want? Do I want to use a just basic CSV dot reader? Do I even import CSV yet? Oh, need to import CSV as well. CSV. Do I want to use a dot reader or dot dict reader? Dict, dict reader. Dict reader, and why is that? Um, because dict reader is going to take, um, is going to go into our CSV and it's going to see those columns and it's going to start assigning uh, key value pairs um, to those uh, columns, which would be keys. Yep, exactly. So we've got these headers and we want to assign which represent keys and the values we want, like name, Lisa, age, 25, role, student, school ID, etc. So, yep, we'll want to use a dict reader. So dict, so as I'm filling this out in IntelliSense, I think it says, hey, I noticed you have like CSV file or the CSV library imported and you're writing DI. You can just auto complete that. I'm passing in the student file. And now I got a loop through. So for row in student reader, I'm just gonna print each row, print row. And I don't really need to create a new student because again, this is a class method. So I can literally just call print capital student dot all students invoke it. And if everything worked out correctly, I should see a bunch of ordered dict with the name as the key and the value as the name of Lisa, age, 25, role, et cetera. So what does this say? It says, let's go back to the, so right here. So it should return an array of student objects. Okay. So well, I shouldn't get rid of that. So let's create an, an empty array. I'm just gonna create like student array equals like so, and now I need to <clears throat> create a brand new student, like print. I need to create a brand new student object. So I need to do student, and now I need to pass in name, age, role, school ID. So this is kind of where kind of, this is where the, the keyword arguments might work because I could technically extract everything from here for this row. I could say, so student, Oop. there we go. Because each row is technically a student, I would be able to do like student and just create a brand new student class like that. But since I'm keeping everything separate by doing name, age, role, school ID, I'm gonna have to extract each student dot name and make sure everything name age role school id password age role school id password before i print that i just want to make sure i can extract print student dot name. Hopefully that works. So I should just see a list of names. I'm gonna clear that. Uh oh, has no attribute name. Let's see if this works. Clear it on there. There we go, Lisa, Jesse, Slater. Can do the same with age. Get 
Nave, age, no, blah, 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 none. All right. <clears throat> so with that, I can create a brand new student. And let's see if this works. So I'm down here. Why am I getting none right here? Does my CSV file go down to line eight? Or do, oh, because it doesn't return anything, sorry. Clear. So student objects right there, great. So now I can literally do student array dot append a new student object. In the very end, I can return a student array. So now when I print student dot all students, it opens up the student CSV file as a dict reader reads from it. I create an empty array. I loop through the student reader each row. I create a brand new student object by passing in the student name, student age, role, school ID, password. And I'm a, so for each student, I'm passing in the student.name, age, role. And I'm creating a brand new student object right here. And then I'm appending the new student object to the student array. And then I'm returning that array. So if I clear, run that, cool, I get a brand new student object, an array of student objects. So what questions do you have about how I created an all students or extracting all the students from the student.csv file and created a brand new array of student objects? Um, you said you could have used the keyword arguments there too under uh... On line 19, you could have unpacked it and done the unpacking thing. If I decided to go with the keyword arguments like um, uh, in my person class, if I decided to do like uh, person info and then done, done the, uh, let's actually, I'm going to comment that out. So if I decided to just do person info and then um, what is it? Self.dict. Dot update. And then pass in the person info. Then, then I'm gonna have to like re-architect this kind of whole thing, I think. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work. So I'm, instead of this, I'm going to comment that out. And like so. Same thing. So I got essentially got rid of the init. I'm going to actually show you kind of what that looks like. Whoop. So same thing, less code, but I kind of don't know what's actually, like what I'm passing in from the student reader from the CSV file. If you had kept the uh, original code and not commented out the um, init method, the self name age row up on line eight through 10, um, and then, um, And then try it. Yeah, get rid of your other uh, one this? above that. Yeah, the didn't you have another one above that? Uh, or not even the qual? Yeah, not even there. You um, yeah, exactly. If you keep that, will it still work with the unpacking thing? And the um... nope. Okay. Yeah. You gotta have... <clears throat> All depends your personal preference, but there's a couple ways to do it. But I'm gonna keep it. So I explicitly see what I'm passing in. And I just wanna make sure it still works. There we go. So with that, I'm gonna 